Welcome to... On tonight's Clubhouse Live, Marquez Valdez Scantling is back and ready for the playoff push. And look who's hanging out with MVS tonight. It's Packers left tackle, Yash Nyman. It's Bears week. Are the guys recharged, rested, and ready for the big game? We'll ask. Plus, we're going to see if the guys know their NFL teams as part of tonight's Clubhouse Live Challenge. It's time to get started. Hey, MBS. Hey, Yash. Come on in. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Yes, welcome back to the Clubhouse Sports Pub and Grill. We're inside the Paper Valley Hotel, downtown Appleton, Wisconsin. I'm Brett Christofferson with USA Today Network, Wisconsin. The bye week is finally out of the way. How's everybody doing tonight? For the Ready for the stretch run? Yes, everybody's pumped, everybody's energized, everybody's ready to uh, start playing some football. And I think everybody's going to be ready for this bit of good news for a change. Chicago Bears fan Ricardo Arguello is not here tonight. He's not here. He's on vacation. So in Ricardo's place, we have one of the good guys. He's wearing some green and gold. Jake Princeton is going to be uh, handling the live chat tonight. Yes, Jake Princeton is there. So uh, no Ricardo. We don't have to uh, listen to him whine about the Bears losing 33-22 to Arizona. But I know that he would be pretty happy that the Vikings lost to the Lions. Vikings fan. That's embarrassing. And you should be in the corner. You should be in the corner. So... All right, so no Ricardo. Uh, I'll be doing a lot of the stuff tonight, but yeah, Ricardo, I know he's watching. The, and by the way, he is in sunny Florida, so for, for, for once in his life, he's actually smart in getting out of here right at the right time since it's uh, an ice box here in northeast Wisconsin. So we always uh, have a lot to talk about. The guys are here, but first, uh, the bye week. Rest time is over for the Packers, right? They're back at it preparing for the stretch run. Up next, Sunday night's Week 14 showdown with Ricardo's uh, hated Bears at Lambeau Field. It'll be a cold night at Lambeau as the early forecast calls for temps to dip into the 20s, although I think during the day it's supposed to be pretty good. Will the Packers keep pace uh, in the race for the NFC's top seed? We'll find that out soon enough. But what we do know is the playoff push is upon us. Who's excited for the playoff push? So is this guy, Happy Vince. This is his time of year. Happy Vince loves December football and loves being in the playoffs, and he loves when the guys are hanging out with us tonight. First things first, our co-host is back. It is Green Bay Packers wide receiver Marquez Valdez-Scantling. He's right there. And check out who's hanging out with MVS tonight. It's offensive line night as we welcome the left tackle. It is Yash Nyman. He's sitting right over there. Yash, a very big man, very big man. So be on your best behavior. He'll break you in two if he doesn't like you. So first things first, uh, thank you to our presenting sponsor, Unison Credit Union. Unison proudly provides the people and businesses of Northeast Wisconsin with exceptional banking services and trusted financial guidance delivered by friendly experts. Personal checking and personal savings, investments, loans, business checking, and business savings. Unison Credit Union empowering you. Normally, I'd kick over, over to Ricardo, but uh, I think I can handle this uh, pretty easily. It's an interactive show. Anybody watching online, Jake's monitoring uh, the chat, uh, whether it's Facebook or uh, on the website as well, YouTube as well. So uh, if you have any questions, let him know. He'll toss them over to us. Otherwise, uh, give us a follow on Twitter. I'm at PC Bretzy. MVS is at MVS double underscore 11. Yash is at Yasua. Oh, I hope I'm saying it. Y-O-S-U-A-H. N-I-J-M-A-N-1. That's his Twitter handle. And uh, give us a like on Facebook, facebook.com slash clubhouse live. So it's Bears week, as I uh, said. And the, hey, the Bears welcome mat is right here for everybody to stomp their feet. We want MVS and uh, Yash to stomp their feet over the ugly Bears logo. So our co-host is in his fourth NFL season, all with the Green Bay Packers. He's averaging 17.8 yards per catch over his career, which ranks third in the NFL Dating back to the 2018 season, his rookie year. How about that statistic for our co-host? 
He has four touchdown receptions of 70-plus yards since 2019. That leads the league. How about that? Our co-host claims to be undefeated in NBA Street Volume 2. He is from the 727, and he is really, really fast. That's why we're going to start calling him the Flash. Give it up for Green Bay Packers wide receiver number 83, Marquez Valdez Scantling, the Flash. You want to sit by me? I'm one of the good guys. I know, I know, I know. Look at this, settling into his co-host role, already right. ripping on me. It didn't take very long. Who Oops, wants I'm, to be so close to me? I'm dropping. Well, <laughs> there are three people on the stage. Uh, about four. It's a big guy over there. Well, that's yeah, that, that, he's two, two guys right there. Yeah. But yeah, no, uh, something that you'll learn is I, maybe you feel the same way. I don't like to be touched, so we have our uh, barrier here. I don't like to be hugged. Maybe you're the same way. We kind of like our space. That'll be fine by me. And you're touching my props here. Already, that's getting me uptight. Okay. My OCD is uh, starting to kick in here a little bit. Yeah, it's even. Okay. There you go. And there's my phone. There we okay. go. Okay. Anything else you have to violate here? <laughs> there we go. All now we're right. good. We're good. We're good. We're, we're good. good. So, well, this, hey, a programming notes, and let's get this uh, show back on track. But, uh, and I'm going to tell you this uh, as well, too. Our very Clubhouse Christmas show mm -hmm. is in two weeks. We're going to do that in two weeks. And uh, everybody wears an ugly Christmas sweater that night, including us. Mm. The top worst, best, ugliest Christmas sweaters, if that makes sense, we'll top get prizes. Worst, best. The best, worst, the worst, best. We'll give uh, prizes to the, the best, worst, ugliest Christmas sweaters, but we all need to be dressed up as well. So am I in it, or am I like the judge? You're a judge, along with your guests that night. We'll all be judges. We, but we're, uh, <laughs> we can't give you the prize. We can't give you the prize. Your prize is being here with us, uh, hanging out with us. So, so anyway, hopefully you have a, an ugly Christmas sweater uh, somewhere at home. We'll see what I could do. Yes. All we'll right. We got two weeks, and that's uh, everybody out here too. Uh, we want you uh, dressed up, having some fun. So, welcome back. Clearly, we didn't scare you off. How you doing? I'm great. How about yourself? <laughs> well, I'm cold, is what I am. I feel that wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly. Well, I mean, well, at least you get to wear sleeves when you go outside. <laughs> Got to play with no sleeves on. So, well, Sunday night's gonna be. Yeah, well, you, you, that's your choice. No, it's not. Yes, your choice. No, it's not. <laughs> if I can wear a, a jacket or hoodie, I would. Trust me. You go right up to Devonte and say, "I'm sorry, nah, Devonte. I know you're you're the leader of this room, but I ain't listening tonight." Nah, man, I don't work like that, unfortunately. <laughs> what would happen if you did say that to Devonte? Um, I mean, it's not really like I'm afraid of him, you know, <laughs> <laughs> he's human. We're actually really good friends. Um, it just, we don't do it. So it's not really a, a thing. An unwritten rule, right? Yeah. So, well, lots happened since you, you were with us a couple weeks ago. You knocked off the Rams, right? 36-28. We can cheer about that one again. Four catches for 50 yards. Good way for you guys to head into the bye. So that's always good to go in with a good taste uh, in your mouth. But Dave, hey, Rosie, let's, uh, Let's start looking ahead. Let's, uh, let's do the MBS gift of the night. That's, everybody's feeling like this right now, right? Everybody's feeling this way. The stretch run is here. The bye week is over. There you are. You're pumped up, right? You're ready to go. <laughs> that was a long time ago. No tattoos. <laughs> long time ago. Hey, I'm, I'm digging. I'm trying to find stuff. I'm trying to find stuff. But right, everybody's, everybody's excited. Yeah. You don't sound excited. I mean, game is a lot of days away, so oh. <laughs> got to get through the whole week of practice. Hey, so. well, I know what you, you might be pumped to be back, but I'm guessing, where, where did you go on your bike? Were you, were you, did Florida. you go back to Florida? So yeah, it was a lot warmer, <laughs> a lot, lot warmer. I just laid in the grass and just stared at the sun for a little bit. Yeah. Rode with my head out the window like a dog. Yeah. You know, <laughs> all the good stuff. I was going to say this nice ice box of northeast Wisconsin can't be feeling too good Yeah, it's right like now. negative eight degrees outside right now. I don't know what's going on. Oh, I, don't, I don't like it. It's not, ne is, it, is, it, is it negative eight right now? It's not, it's not that cold, is it? Is it the wind chill? Is it that bad right now? That's well, all that matters is what it feels like. I don't yeah. care if the temperature says. What it feels like is what it is. Kind of like the ice bowl when it was like minus 13, but it was almost minus 50 was yeah. uh, the wind chill that day. So. Sickening. That's what you want. That's what you want on Sunday night, though, right? Who says that? Like <laughs> All these, right? You guys want a cold. Let me hear you. They want it cold. They can Grizzly watch, Dan wants it cold. They can watch from their house, the warm blankets and the fireplace going. <laughs> like, we got to be out there and my feet are frozen. Like, it's not fun. But they have good stuff for you. You got your heated benches, you got jackets, you got all this stuff. Yeah, but when I'm in the game, I don't have that. No, that's true. That's <laughs> true. But this is, the, this, see, the, you're, you're, this is supposed to be the psychological effect you have on teams like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. See, it's just like 
it, it's not an advantage because I got to play in it too, you know? But you live it. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well, what did, what did you do during your bye week? How'd you relax? So what did you do um, in Florida besides sitting on the grass and staring at the sun? Um, not much, to be honest. I kind of just hung out with my family. Uh, my dad had a, a football game. He coaches my high school. So I went down to, to the game and, you know, helped those young guys out. Um, I had a pop-up shop for my clothing line. So that was, that was good. Had a good turnout. Um, kind of turned into a meet and greet as well. So able to meet some fans, take some pictures, and, and sell some of my merchandise. Very good. That sounds yeah. productive. When you go home, can you, can you be yourself? Or are you kind of like MVS the celebrity now? No, no, no. I live in Tampa, so everybody's, everybody's important there. So I'm just another guy walking <laughs> through the streets. Well, that's got to feel good, though, right? You yeah, can just sort yeah, of blend yeah, in 100%. and not, uh, not be uh, too worried about that stuff. So how about did you hit the kitchen, right? You're a cook. Uh, he's talking about his, his great skills in the kitchen, whipping up some dishes, right, yeah, and man, all that I'm, kind of stuff. I, I always cook. I um, actually didn't do a lot of cooking when I was home. I was kind of all over the place. So I didn't really have time to sit down and, and make a bunch of food, you know. You know what, uh, I think Ricardo actually brought this up, and I know he's watching. He's in Florida right now, by, by the way. He, he was smart to get out of town, but uh, he was thinking maybe we should do an MVS cooking segment on Clubhouse Live every, every Monday. I'm all for it. We, we got a kitchen that I can use? Well, we got a grill back there. I don't know what we could use there. Maybe we could do the MVS recipe of the week. You can make something happen. Should we, should we do that? We can make something happen. Yeah, well, let's do it. You guys want to see the MVS recipe, maybe? <laughs> be kind of fun. Make something happen. Kind of figure that out how we want to do that. Uh, maybe we can show some uh, uh, some sort of a recipe on uh, on the screen. So, so when you're away, are you away? Are you, can you can you completely get rid of football? Do you, do you just shut it down? Or are you still keeping tabs on what's going on? Well, you, see, you mentioned you're with your dad and, and doing some coaching, but um, got some time I mean, about the NFL. You know, I might you know turn the game on or something, or check the scores, see who's you know losing or winning our division, or see if Arizona lost or something like that. Um, but you know, kind of stay away from it because it's a it's a long football season. Um, I don't think people really realize how long it actually is. Obviously, with 17 games and three preseason games, that's 20 weeks, and then training camp is you know five weeks, so you're 25 weeks into a year, and then playoffs, so. That can be, you know, 30 weeks out of a year. So it's a long, long time to be thinking about football. Long time to think about football. That's why it was so nice for you guys to get away for many reasons. So how are, how are you feeling mentally and physically? Are you refreshed? Uh, yeah, I'm was good, it? man. Just coming back recharged. Um, obviously, we had one of the latest bye weeks ever in the history of football. <laughs> like yeah. week 13. Um, it's just, just crazy. But I think it came at a, a good time because, you know, every week we're, we're losing somebody. And it's just a testament to – what we need um, is some time off. And obviously, us going to two NFC championships back-to-back -back years, it definitely makes it a lot harder because uh, we're playing more games, you know, than most of the league. So we had an extra, you know, six weeks, you know, added on to our bodies. So that's, that's always tough. You know, you mentioned, uh, and I've got the stat here, and I'll mention it a little bit, but there's actually four more teams that have a bye week now coming up. So they got to be one more week. It's the, what, the Colts, the Dolphins, the Patriots who play tonight, and the Eagles. That's a long – I'm mean, almost done with the regular season by that point. Why are you even giving the bye week at this point? Yeah. Like, I feel like everyone should have the same bye week, like right in the middle of the season. should be no football. Should just take one, you know, yeah. boy, and too they, much money, yeah, too, too much, much money, money too much fantasy football out there. You can't do that, right? But, Crazy, uh, right? You sense, though, the team needed it. Yeah, the team 100%. needed to get away. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like feeling, uh, you know, was it more mental or physical at this stage of the season? I mean, both. Obviously, you know – Football is a very mental sport, but obviously you got, you know, 200, 300 pound guys trying to kill you every play. It, it, it's physically um, exhausting as well. So you got guys like this guy over here. He's yeah. huge, you know. So. Look at that smile. He's not trying to hurt anybody. Yeah. Maybe not right now, but uh, come Sunday, it's a different story. So. Flip is uh, the switch is flipped. So, yeah. well, what was it like today uh, at the facility? Was it light work or was it were you diving right in? I guess take us through. No, nah, it was uh, kind of more of a just a. Get your get the rust off, you know. Just get some movement around, do some individual stuff, and we didn't really have too many competitive periods. It was more so just getting the cleats back on, so we don't have to go in Wednesday and go full speed, you know, right away and have an injury after not doing anything for ten days, you know, because obviously the week off and then Monday, Tuesday. So, you know, you don't want to have to go, you know, nine, ten days without doing something. Um, so just a little ramp up day. You know, we always talk about this on the show when it's a bye week because you because you hear the coaches, whether it's McCarthy or Lafleur, anybody. Bye week is self scout time. Uh, his coaching staff was going to look at everything that they've been doing, 
you guys take that opportunity as well to look at what you guys have done so far through the season? And if so, what the kind of conclusions did you come about? Uh, I mean, you, you look at yourself individually and kind of see what you've been doing good and what you haven't been doing good um, and what you want to get better at. Um, but, you know, it's definitely a time to kind of just reflect on yourself and kind of also just get away from, you know, putting all the pressure on yourself because obviously as, as players, we put more pressure on ourselves than anybody. So just it's good to be able to take that pressure off yourself for a couple of days before you have to get back into it. As you looked at your most two, two most recent games, we <clears throat> we talked a little bit about the Rams and then before that the Vikings. The offense really really started to click, especially that second half against Minnesota. And I have it right here: back to back thirty plus point outings, and then you had a string of ten scoring drives, which included seven touchdowns, over thirteen possessions between those two games, not including the kneel down at the end of the half uh, against Minnesota. That's pretty good production. What's clicked now, and how do you use that going forward in these final five weeks? So, what, what, what's uh, what's going on with the offense, and which the production's playing at a higher level? Uh, I mean, I think just getting getting people back healthy, man. I mean, we've lost you know starters you know every week, and kind of had to throw guys in there um, and kind of change our game plan mid game because of, of injuries. So, I think just being able to have a full week with the you know core group of people that we can kind of create plays around is kind of what the whole thing has been. One more, uh, two more actually coming up, uh, two more points, one question, one point, and then I'm going to do the first audience question of the night, and I'm handling that tonight. Um, have you finally figured out the identity of your team offensively? Uh, that's always been, I know when Alan was here, that was kind of like we're still kind of figuring out, figuring out, figuring out. Uh, now we're going into week 14, last five games. Do you know what your offense is all about? Um, I think that we have multiple identities okay. um, because we can pretty much do everything. Um, and I think that's what makes us so successful because, you know, we can get it, you know, physical and, and run the football. Um, we can spread it out and, and pass the ball. We can play action. We can go no huddle. Um, and I think obviously having the playmakers that we have in, in each room makes it really easy to, to do that. But I think we have multiple identities. I don't think we really have a, a weakness um, when it comes to what we can't do. We're not one dimensional in anything. I think we have so many facets of what we can do, so. Yeah, and uh, mentioned more guys maybe coming back. LaFleur uh, noted it today about uh, Bakhtiari might practice this week, Jair might practice, Zadarius might practice. How about that, getting 55 back out on the field for a pass rush, so getting some all-pro talent back. Uh, we'll see, we'll see how it all kind of shifts. And having said that, though, you guys are uh, humming along pretty well, uh, yeah. just, just fine with, with the guys you have as well. So last thing you mentioned, yeah, this is the latest buy for the Packers since the buy was uh, reestablished in 1990. That's, uh, that's crazy. Uh, this is just the fourth time the Packers have had a buy in week 10 or later. The most recent was a week 11 buy just a couple of weeks ago. So, all right. Uh, normally I'd kick over Ricardo, but uh, this time is he, he's making me work too hard to, tonight. <laughs> you got to take, take his paycheck. Yeah, well, yeah. We're going <laughs> we're gonna to dock him a week's uh, worth of pay. I think that's a good idea. So, we got a question of Mark uh, right over there. Maybe you can see Mark on the, on the screen, everybody. This is for Marquez. Uh, he wants to know, what would you say was your best game as a pro? Um, That's a good question. Um, yeah, it's, it's tough because um, obviously I think the, the biggest game I had um, was in an NFC championship. Mm -hmm. But we lost that game, so that sucks. So I don't even want to count that as, you know, being a – a good game. Um, I think we played Detroit last year, maybe like week 15 or so. I think I had like six targets and six catches, and a touchdown. So I think that was a, a really good game. Um, Jacksonville last year, um, that was a really good game. So any of those games. There you go. Thank you, Mark. A round of applause for Mark. Uh, already many good games for MVS and many more still to come. All right, let's take our first time out of the evening, and it's time for tonight's. Mark Olenichik Realty Stat Pack. If you are buying or selling real estate in Northeast Wisconsin, contact the licensed professional realtors at Mark Olenichik Realty. Call 920-432-1007 or visit olej.com. Here we go. The Packers are the only team in the NFL over the past three seasons to start the season with a 9-3 and three record or better. How about that? That's according to stathead.com. All three seasons, of course, are during the Matt LaFleur era. This also marks the fourth time in team history the Packers have won at least nine of their first 12 games in at least three straight seasons. They accomplished that feat 
back in uh, way back when, uh, 1929 through 32 under Curly Lambeau, and Long then twice under Vince Lombardi, 1961 Long through 63, and then again 65 through 67. Green Bay uh, won eight NFL titles over that span. So uh, looking pretty good for these guys, right? Make a title run. We also are doing trivia tonight. Uh, and uh, again, it's pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to ask a trivia question, and uh, we're going to ask you guys to raise your hand if you think you know the answer. Uh, the winner tonight gets uh, nachos and beer. Uh, you can pick those up at, at the uh, bar right behind here. And uh, we're going to go, go from there. So this is kind of weird not having Ricardo here. I, I, need, I need him to make fun of and give me a little bit of a breather. So it's pretty easy. If you happen to win, though, you are out for the rest of the show. Sorry, live chatters. You have to be here to take part. So here we go. Trivia question number one. Two players this season have thrown touchdown passes for the Packers. Who are they? Way back at the bar right there. Yeah, pretty easy one. Everybody forgets that Jordan Love threw a touchdown pass. Yes. You're right at the bar. You can pick up your uh, gift certificate. Remember, it was uh, back in Tom Crabtree's first year with us here on the show was Tim Maste. Remember the fake uh, field goal uh, against the Chicago Bears? Rodgers, 23 touchdown passes so far, while Love's only TD was caught by Alan Lazard and uh, against the Chiefs. So, we ready for the big fella to get up here? You ready for your guest, MVS? Yeah. All right, here we go. Our guest tonight, everybody. Uh, is in his third NFL season, all with the Packers, was signed by the Packers as an undrafted free agent in 2019. Our guest tonight has appeared in all 12 games this season, which includes four starts at left tackle. How about that? He's playing good over on the left side, isn't he? Our guest tonight appeared in all 16 regular season games last year, seeing time at offense and special teams. He played collegiately at Virginia Tech. He's a Hokie, right? Where he started 32 of the 45 games in which he appeared. Our guest tonight is a state champion shot putter. He is a robot dance master, we know that. And he might possibly just be the largest human we've ever had on this show. Unbelievable, give it up for Green Bay Packers, left tackle number 73, Yash Nyman. <laughs> Sorry, I do, I, need to, I do need to check the time on my phone from time to time. I hope you're okay with nah, it's all good. moving gotcha. the barrier here a little bit. Yeah, so. I got you. Just don't cross it. We're yeah, good. I will not cross it. No, I, I, I actually I kind of appreciate this a little bit. Yeah, it's finally welcome. somebody that doesn't mind uh, not being touched like me. Nice, nice, nice. Yash, whoa, Yash is giving me a glare. I think he wants to hit me or something. I feel, I'm a little nervous on offensive line night. And, uh, line night, it is always some weird stuff. But because this is now MVS's show and you are his guest, Marquez always insists on asking the first question of the night. MVS, you're up. Oh, man. Pressure's on. Here we go. Drum roll. Uh, there you go. Um, all right. Well, the first question is, how much have you learned playing behind an all-pro left tackle? Mm, um, I've learned a lot. I don't, I don't know what the threshold of that is, but I've learned a lot from... Bacciari, yeah. 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 I mean, I learned a lot playing behind Devontae, so. I mean, Specifically, or? No, nah, I mean, whatever. You know, I know that's a question that a lot of people want to know, being able to come in and, and play as well as you have over the last, you know, few games, or even dating back to last year when you had to step in and playing as well as you did. You know, how having a guy like David, you know, show you the ropes, um, how has that elevated your game? I think, you know, uh, during the games, uh, having him uh, by my side just, giving me tips and things to how to block guys during yeah. each different drives definitely help yeah you know help me with yeah yeah absolutely uh good good, good guy to learn from a, a bunch of good guys uh, in the uh wide or um offensive line room obviously to uh, learn from so yash nyman welcome to clubhouse live uh well, good to have you here we appreciate you spending some time with us here on a monday night uh six foot seven yash nyman how about that the guy's a he's a beast yeah, I don't, I don't really feel small around a bunch of people. This guy, I feel small, and I don't yeah. like it. I do not like it at all. And if you, if you feel small, how do you think I feel? I yeah, mean, I do uh, not like it. I do not like it. I, I can't even stand next to him. I gotta, like, anytime I talk to him, I got to stand like four feet away just so I can be eye to eye because if I get too close, I'm like, and I, I don't like that. I don't like it at all. 
Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's a big guy to try to uh, get around if you're a pass rusher, wi without a doubt. So, well, how about you, Marquez? Six foot seven, basketball, right? You think about a big enforcer. Uh, I mean, who, who, he's got to be part of the Packers starting five if, you, if you've got a basketball team going. I mean, that's tough. We got some hoopers, man. Yeah, but you got you got size. You need a, you need a big man. You need a guy that's just going to be a rim protector. You haven't seen Mercedes Lewis? He's a big dude too, yeah. He was a hooper. <laughs> oh, is he? Okay. Yeah, he, UCLA. Like he was, he was why, why can't you have both of them together? You can. Right? That's a, that's a lot of you know. But you you know, go, if you go I, small I, ball, I, I you got to chase I, around. You know, guys like me. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say the four and five position, just right there. Yeah, sure. <laughs> that's taken care of. You have power yeah. forward and center, but who else is on that team? Then Devontae, right? Yeah, of course, Devontae is going to be on that team. Um, I'm not a big basketball guy, believe it or not. Um, who else can play? Um, I don't know. Sure. Aaron Jones, uh, I know. Yeah, he's obviously he was a he was a college basketball player. Yeah. Um, so he would probably be the point guard for sure, and Devontae would probably play the two. There I don't you know go. who would be the three. Uh, you? A good question? Nah, 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 nah. I'm not a hooper. Not, Aaron, not really my game. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I don't know, man. He you thinks know. he's a great basketball player. I've I've seen him shoot. <laughs> oh. I've seen him shoot. Aaron Rodgers. He's shoot. been on the show a few times. He's a, he's a fan. He's listening in tonight. Yeah, I've seen him shoot. <laughs> I call him and tell him, you know. <laughs> well, we, we got time to figure that out. But that, that's four out of five is pretty good, especially with the big guys underneath. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to get too much in the paint. So, all right, Yash, I got to do it. You know it's coming. People have been bugging me since, uh, since we found out you're going to be on the show. He's got to do the robot dance in front of everybody. <laughs> everybody wants to see it. They want to see it. Can you at least give us a little? Rosie, do you have some music maybe for, for Yash? You can, too, you can say no. You can say no. You can say no. Maybe we get some music to, to kind of do the robot. And, I, and I'll do my robot for you once you do your robot. You can critique uh, my robot. I can give you like seven seconds of the robot. Seven seconds. Let's do it. Rosie, you got some music for Yash maybe? He... No, nah, we're not prepared. We're not prepared. He's not prepared? <laughs> we're not prepared. Do you want me to stand here? Whatever you want to do, let's just see it. Yeah, he's ready to go. You guys want to see this? Yeah. The robot. <laughs> Pretend I just... There we go. There's some music. That's, that's a fast That'll robot. <laughs> that is an extremely fast robot. That's good robot music. I don't know. How did All we right. get here? All right, here we go. Let's How do we see get it, here? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. We did it. How did we get here? Well done. Well done. Uh, how did that come about again? Was that, that was way back in, in college, right? When you started doing that? Oh, um, like when I was like eight years old. Way back when. Yeah. Way, way back. Yeah, really way back. Way back, yeah. How about mine? How do you like mine? You okay? Yeah. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta move like one. You move I got too I got, many body parts. I got a lot of rhythm going here, yeah. Can you see that? How do I do? I don't think you're okay. If you had, if you had to critique that, what Zero. am I doing wrong? <laughs> everything. <laughs> Literally doing everything. Wrong? everything. 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 Maybe. You're moving your whole body. Yeah, like just you, you gotta, like, I can't. I one can't. Limb at the time, one, one limb at a time. I think I'm like the Tin Man in the Wizard of Oz, more or less. I need some oil or something some to get oil, these old yeah. joints That'd going. That'd be D40 so. or something. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mark Wells, let's break on uh, Yash a little bit. Uh, what do you like about this guy? What does he bring to the locker room? What does he bring to the offense? What, uh, what does he bring to the huddle? I mean, uh, he's, he's playing good football for you guys. He's playing great football. Um, and I think that's the, the greatest thing about it is that he came in and didn't say a word to anybody, you know, he's just super, super quiet. Um, and obviously, you know, there's not many guys who are just like extremely quiet in the locker room. You know, you're going to have some type of outburst at some given time. And Yasha's is just like, is he even here? Like, I didn't even know he spoke when I first got there. Like, is he mute? Like, I don't even know if he, if he speaks. Uh, he just plays football and, and that's it. Like, I don't even know if he knows what's going on. He's just out there just blocking people. Like, whoever's in front of him, just block him. Um, but nah, he's just a he's a great teammate. Um, and he's just he's grateful just to just to be there. Um, and I think we take that for granted as as athletes so much um, because we've we've been there for so long um, that we take it for granted that this is what we worked our whole life to be. You know, standing right here in this locker room. You know, it's five degrees outside, and I'm complaining about it's cold. But I worked my whole life to be here. And I think he takes that, you know, and and runs with it every day. You know, he's just grateful to be out there and be lining up and standing in the huddle with, with the guys. And I think that's the best part about him. Um, and you can see it in the way he approaches, you know, his everyday, you know, habits. What's he like on the field? 
I mean, he's literally the still, same. Still same, quiet like, as can be. Quiet, okay. like he doesn't can, just like turn into a mean guy. He can pancake a guy, and you won't even know it. Like it's just like, yeah, she just put that guy down. Like, oh yeah, I guess I did. And just back to the huddle. <laughs> You guys see the clip of him uh, taking down uh, Aaron Donald in a, in a pancake? That, that's been making the way in social media. Yeah. So, uh, well, I'll tell you what, Yash. I, I, great job by MVS here to kind of uh, segue into this. But uh, Packers.com had a quote from Devontae Adams about you. I think he was kind of referring to the robot dance uh, from an earlier game. But he said, quote, that you're just fully aware of the moment, just living in the moment, appreciating it. Really hard worker, great guy, man of faith, so I love him, uh, end quote. So, like... Devante, like MBS just said, is, 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 is that been the key to your success, just living in the moment, appreciating it, uh, relishing the opportunity that, that, that's in front of you right now? Yeah, I, I would say, like, during the time the 49ers game came up, um, I just know, like, at that point, like, I was just envisioning, like, Sunday, like, the whole week, and just thinking to myself, like, okay, yeah, this is, this is what I'm going to have to do. And that just mentally preparing myself for Sunday. And then Sunday came, I was prepared for it. So I, I realized like, at that moment, like, it's good to just live in the moment when it's happening and to embrace it and to like really embrace it. So I, I embraced it that night, that Saturday. I mean, that Sunday we played and just, you know, did my job. And, yeah. yeah, that's good. That's good advice, right? Just live in the moment, right? Don't think ahead, don't look back, be here. Well, here you are, undrafted, right? There's, there's a number of guys on the Packers roster that's uh, undrafted, and it's a hard road. It, it's hard to make the, the, the active roster, let alone play, and let alone have a huge impact in what you're doing on the field. So I ask these guys uh, this all the time when they're on the show, how did you do it? How did, how did you get here? Well, you talk about your journey and, and it's how you persevered. So, yeah, so... Uh, it's actually a super long story, but we got all night. <laughs> we got all night. Let's yeah, go. I'm in high school. Started playing football sophomore year. Got into the varsity team. My high school coach was like, "Hey, man, like I think you could really play some like like college football if you wanted to." And I was like, "I don't, I don't know, man. You know, but I, I stuck with it actually. And then went to Fort Union Military Academy after graduating, uh, 2014, Columbia High School, in New Jersey." And I was there for a semester, and then Virginia Tech offered me there, and then enrolled the summer or the spring of 2015, and played left. I was actually in defense alignment, and then was a converted <laughs> offense alignment. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, but then, like, my freshman year, like, from that summer to that first game we played at Ohio State, I gained like 20 pounds. And, like, <laughs> I know that was like the heaviest I've ever been in my life, but then I realized I was like, okay, like, you know, going from D line to O line, I was like, it can't be that bad, but, you know. Here I am now, um, but it was still a long journey to get here, though. But you know, um, yeah. And then uh, after I, I had a few surgeries in college, um, I don't think it hindered me any. But then you know, I went to after that went to uh, uh, senior year 2018. Jane Tech. I played right tackle um, for one year after playing three years left tackle, and then. Draft came, Packers gave me an opportunity to come here, so I've been here ever since. Yeah. How about that? Good to have him here <laughs> in Green Bay. Made a huge difference. You think there's more hunger for undrafted guys? Sit. More hunger? I like that you got to prove, prove to yourself, prove to the team, prove to all the teams that maybe passed on you. you know, that, yeah. I mean, is, is there a little bit more? Choose uh, to try to make a roster, or is that uh, yeah, maybe more? I, I would say, you know, I would say there's a lot of disappointment for all of us that didn't get drafted. So I think our mindset is like at least like get your foot in the door, so and then go from there. But here you are again, living in the moment, right? That's in the past. We don't. Nobody cares. You're here. You're the starting left tackle. You're protect, pr uh, protecting Aaron Rodgers and getting ready for a Super Bowl run here. Mm. Another quote I want to uh, share with you guys. This is from Billy Turner. He recently was when he was recently asked about you. Quote. To be honest with you, he is probably the most explosive person on this team, pound for pound. How he moves and how he is able to move is honestly second to none. He's a specimen. That's what Billy Turner said about Yash. How about that? End quote. I often call myself a specimen as well, but this is truly a specimen, without a doubt. But... Uh, Turner also said, uh, Yash, that everybody on the team knew what you were capable of. Capable of. It's just a matter of you getting that opportunity, getting on the field. Uh, so 
Uh, what does that vote of confidence mean coming from a guy like Billy Turner who's been in the league, what, eight years, nine years, somewhere, somewhere around there? I'm uh, grateful for Billy. I'm grateful to have a teammate like Billy and MVS, like everyone in the locker room. Um, you know, that means a lot to me. Uh, you know, sometimes I would read the quotes and just, you know, on my own time and realize, you know, I have a great group of guys around me and I hope to be the same for them. So, Was it a matter, did you think too, I just got to get this opportunity because if I get on the field, I know I can play at a high level? Um, yeah, I mean, I, my mindset was whatever the team needs, you know, and if they need me to go in and step in, then that's what I would do. So. All right, so as I asked Marquez, self-scout time, I asked him the kind of the same question, but I ask you, uh, assess your playing uh, so far. Uh, thrust in and into a, a tough role, but it seems like you, you're, you're doing just fine. But if you were your position coach, how would you grade yourself if you were uh, Adam Stenovich? How would I grade myself? Um, <laughs> we're our probably... biggest critics, so that's, that's tough. It man. is tough, that's right? Tough. Yeah. Never good enough. We're always going to say that. Yeah. Perfectionists. Yeah. You got to be. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, whatever I'm thinking now is probably what I would grade myself as. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm always, like, you know, critical as any athlete would be about themselves, yeah, so. Yeah, you have to. Probably be the same thing. That's a good point. You really do have to be brutally honest with yourselves when you're watching a film. A lot of people can't do that. They, want, they don't yeah. want to have criticism, right? They don't want to be told what's wrong, but that's the only way when you're in your position to have success. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like I said, like I, that's why I'll never be affected by, like, what any other person says about me, whether it's you know uh, a coach, whether it's social media, whether it's a you know a analyst, whoever it is, because there's Ricardo. nothing that, there's nothing that they can say. And I'll never, he won't ever get a thought in my head. Um, <laughs> but there won't ever be a time where someone else has said something that I haven't already told myself, like oh he dropped the ball or he missed a block or like you think I don't know that <laughs> like. Yeah, right. Right. Duh. yeah. Like I saw it, I did it. You know, so you you I, you can't ever hurt my feelings about you know something that's football related because I've already told it to myself. And as long as I can be honest with myself about the situation, I know I can always get better. Yash, in what areas uh, do you think you've had the most growth uh, since coming to Green Bay? And maybe what areas do you think you still need to uh, tweak and, and continue to improve upon? Um, I, I feel like the game speed, like. You know, just picking up the game speed is probably like the most challenging. First coming in, picking up the snap count and like just visualizing everything, just the process is just a little bit quicker. You know, just handling that, making everything I need to do before getting to the line of scrimmage, that needed to be um, quicker. So getting used to that. Is that so, that's a real thing for you guys, isn't it? Just, you know, it, it slows down. It's hard to visualize. It, like, I suppose when you come in as a, as a young player, rookie, everything's flying, and, and you, you learn in the playbook, right, Marquez? But then there's that moment where it just all of a sudden clicks. Is that what they mean by it? It just finally slows down? And, or as Yash is saying, like, the game speed now, I, I've, I've kind of picked it up. It's not as fast anymore. Well, I think for, for my position, um, it's completely different um, because guys run fast at every level. You know, uh, guys are still running 4-3 in college, you know, so windows close a little bit faster, um, but guys are still running fast. So no matter who's on the other side, he was running that fast in college as well. Um, you know, so the game speed for me wasn't really an issue, obviously, because I already run fast. So it's, it's hard to think they'd be faster than me. Um, but, you know, I think just in, in general, um, I know for definitely like O-line and quarterback, things move a lot faster for, for those guys and even running backs because, you know, in college you see, you know, running back holes huge and they just hit it and you don't really see those holes. And if you do see them, they close really, really fast. Um, and I think that's the, the biggest change for, you know, it's for the interior guys because guys are a lot more physical, stronger. Um, you're not going to see, you know, you know, a bunch of Kenny Clarks in college, but you're going to see a Kenny Clark every week in the pros, you know. So I think that's kind of the – the difference for, you know, outside, you know, where I play and then internal where, you know, these big guys play, you know, that's where the game speed is a lot faster. Well, I'm guessing, uh, Yash, as far as helping with game speed, Adam Stenovich, right? We, we talked about him a little bit, but I, Elton Jenkins was on earlier this season, same with Royce Newman, asked him, ask those guys the same questions. How much has Adam Stenovich, Luke Butkus, how much uh, have they meant to your uh, development? What are, the, what are the, some of the things that uh, they the imparted upon you to uh, get you to where you're playing right now? Um, just demanding, you know, um, focus every day and just like my best 
So pretty much them getting my best or drawing the best out of me every day helped me develop a mindset to do that for myself. So I'm grateful for that. How about in practice in Preston Smith, Rashawn Gary, right? Those guys, mm -hmm. I'm guessing they're bringing out the, your best oh, as well. Yeah, no, like, honestly, going into practice is like you have an opportunity to really, like, you know, hey, if I can match up against these guys, then these are premier dudes. If I can slow these guys down, then, you know, I might have a chance. Slow anybody you now. Know, if I can stop <laughs> them, then, you know, shoot, like, all right, I'm doing really well now. Mm -hmm. And every day you get a chance to do that, you're going to make mistakes, but getting close to where you need to go is every day is the mindset. All right. And then we've, we've seen this, you know, this guy has done against right Nick Bosa, right, uh, doing well. T.J. Watt, uh, Aaron Donald recently. So you're going against the, the cream of the crop there. And uh, I get those guys are going to make you better as well, not only in practice with your own teammates, but going against some of the premier guys throughout the league. Yep. You get you know, week in and week out. So uh, have you guys been able to keep things going as an offensive line, all banged up, all injured? Uh, how have you guys been able to just really not miss a beat? Um, you know, we, as a collective group, are pretty tight. Um, we have great leadership in our room. And, you know, pretty much our mindset is the same every Sunday. You know, the offense goes as the offense line goes. And, you know, our mindset is just to punish guys. Punish guys, right? And that starts with the Bears, everybody, coming up on Sunday night, doesn't it? We want to see Ricardo here next week all depressed uh, <laughs> and, and not uh, feeling happy about anything. So a couple more things, and then it's time for tonight's social media question of the night. But, uh, Yash, I've got it right here. But, uh, you know, I mentioned all these folks that have helped you out. But I'm guessing guys like David Bakhtiari, MBS kind of talked about it, Elton Jenkins. Well, you know, uh, I, I'm guessing that they've been in your ear too. And uh, maybe what is an Elton Jenkins who just was playing left tackle, kind of thrust into a new position, obviously. But... What have you learned from uh, from Elton and in, in, uh, in, in helping your development? Um, with Elton, you know, just for him, it's just like a confidence thing. You tell me, just you know, go get it or something, some affirmation that I need to hear that I'll just take during the week from when he said it throughout the whole week. You know, without even without him even knowing what he said, like has such an impact on yeah. me, and I'll take that and have it build up to that Sunday moment. So listening right uh so last okay look at me look at me ash as i said uh, I, I view myself as a specimen just like you're viewed as a specimen all right now look at me if you had to teach me how to play left tackle all right yep what are some of the tips that you would give me to to the keys of playing left tackle at a high level well i, I can you, tell you well, if no, I played, no 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 i'm asking <laughs> yash now if i played dn i would have 17 sacks easy so, no, no you wouldn't because i'd hold chance. you on every play not a chance not with MBS. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, there's more to playing left tackle, though, yeah. obviously, than just uh, putting your hands up and trying to block a guy. There's a lot of technique involved. Yeah, a lot of technique and hand placement, eye placement, timing, a lot of things. He's not going to give me any tips because yeah, you, don't uh, need him. you don't need him. One of these, one of the, I'm going to take MBS on the challenge here, and we're going to we're going to see if he can get past me at some point here this season. You guys want to see that? Maybe we'll close up College Avenue for that. Yeah. Do they have insurance for you? Or, or maybe we won't do that. Do they have insurance for you? Uh, I, I do have insurance, yes. Just making sure. I got to check with my wife to make sure that everything's okay with that, though. Uh, I need her permission first. So, all right. Hey, let's do tonight's social media question of the night. It is from Bill Calloway on Facebook. Uh, this is for Marquez. Yeah, this is a cooking question. What are some of your favorite dishes that you've made, number one, and number two, have you cooked for any of your teammates yet? Um, some of the dishes that I, uh, my favorite dishes, I make a really good stuffed salmon. Mm. Um, I mean, I can pretty much cook anything. Um, <laughs> so I don't really have a favorite dish. It's kind of whatever I feel like cooking. Um, yeah, I've cooked for a couple of my teammates before. Um, I, like I said, I've done Thanksgiving. You know, EQ would come down and I made food for him. Um, some of the receivers have eaten some of our food. Um, pretty much all the guys that live on my street, because um, all of us kind of live on the same street, they all have eaten some of my food. So they might just, uh, you know, smell the, the grill in the backyard. Yes. Aaron, Aaron Jones has come over. He's my neighbor. He's come over and, and got a plate, you know, because he smelled the food. You know, <laughs> just so. shows up with a plate. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, hey, bro, what you cooking over here? Come on in. Come on. Marquez is cooking. Let's go. 
Well, you're gonna have to you have to cook double for this guy to fill uh, fill up this uh, belly, right? So, I mean, this guy's salads. got an appetite. He eats salads. He's a he's a healthy eater. Really? He doesn't eat salads. Yeah, I don't no know. Way. Probably not. Like whole cows. I don't know. <laughs> I was gonna say when you when you gain those twenty pounds, what, what were we, uh, we just going oh fast food every day, right? McDonald's. Yeah, not, yeah, we like have an on campus uh, cafeteria, and I was just there every day in summer. <laughs> and like my coach was just watching me finish play after play, and I was like, I can't do, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Sports feeding them. But yeah, hurts. no, yeah, yeah. Hurts. It hurts. Yeah. Hey, for having uh, his question selected, Bill uh, wins a signed photo of Marquez Valdez Scantling. Each week, we'll ask you to submit a question for Marquez that we'll ask live during Monday's show. Uh, we'll look for it on facebookcom Live. Timeout number two. Trivia question number two. I'm asking you guys to see who raises his or her hand first. He currently leads the Packers with six and a half sacks. Who is he? We got. We got anybody? Six and a half sacks right here. Yes, Come Rashawn on. Gary. My hand went up first. What's that? My hand went up first. Oh, you're supposed to help me. You are disqualified from this. You I'm have uh, access to my script right here. He wins, though, the nacho in uh, beer gift certificate. Rashawn Gary, six and a half sacks. All right. The barrier's going down because, uh, Rosie, we need some music. It is time for tonight's Clubhouse Live Challenge. Let's play it. Sponsored by Bobbles Galore. Bobbles Galore is your source for the largest selection of bobbleheads that you will find anywhere. All sports, all teams, entertainers, and more shop Bobbles Galore for that unique piece for your mantle or man cave. And they have a great selection of Packers, Brewers, and Bucks bobbleheads. Bobbles Galore also makes custom bobbleheads that are perfect for weddings, birthdays, retirements, or any special occasion. And their unique AR or augmented reality app uh, makes this Packers bobblehead come to life. There it is on the screen. That is beautiful. We're going to give that away at the end of the season. Just as it does with this MVP set as well. There it is. Yes. All the bobbleheads shown here on Clubhouse Live are available on bobblesgalore.com. Look for special discounts on uh, the website. Uh, the more you buy, the more you save. All right, guys. We are going to play a game we call Pennant Race. All right. So let me get my... Uh, I got to get to the game for you guys here in a second. Hold on. There we go. Well, that's Mad Vince, though. We don't care about that. So, all right. We only care about Happy Vince. So, this is the way. We got pennants. You can take the clips off of those if you don't mind. You each have the mini pennants of 32 NFL teams all mixed up. The Packers' schedule this season features four games against the NFC West, right? And four games against the AFC North. Now, Marquez, you must find the pennants. No, no, no. Here we go. I don't know what we're doing. I was just... You must find the pennants of the four NFC West teams on your schedule. And uh, Yash, you must find the pennants of the four AFC North teams on your schedule. The person who completes the task first wins the game and prizes for his playing partner, uh, MBS. Your playing partner is Steve Juno. Juno, he is right there. Up, That's your uh, playing partner. And Yash, right next to Steve, is Amber from Appleton. Yeah, Steve is from Kimberly. Amber is from Appleton. This is what you're playing for tonight. Double bobbleheads, right? The Italian sausage and a mini Ryan Braun bobblehead courtesy of Bobbles Galore. The winner also goes home with a signed photo of MBS and a USA Today Network Wisconsin ice scraper Grizzly Dan. We need him now. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the scraper. The runner-up goes home with a signed photo and the uh, ice scraper. So that's a lot of pressure on you guys. Again, Marquez, the four NFC West teams, Yash the four AFC North team. Who wants MBS to win tonight? Whatever. Yeah, Steve wants you. Who wants Yash uh, to win? Whose show is this? It, it's always this way, though. They always side with the guest. They always side with the guest. So, all right, Rosie, host, I guess. I keep know. that music coming. The first person who gets it done first wins three. Two, one, let's go. Let's see uh, who's going to get the uh, pennants first. The NFC West for Marquez. The AFC South for I can't even Yash. Can I, the, can I put my mic down or no? You can do whatever you want. Yep. I didn't know that. Here we go. I think we got, uh, well, we got, we're getting close. Yash has got, looks like he's got three. Marquez has two. Marquez has three. Damn. Yash. Gotcha. Does Yash have all four? Yep. Oh. Yash has got four. He does. He did get it done. He's got the Ravens, the Bengals, the Steelers, and the Browns. He got it first. Yash Nyman wins. 
the challenge tonight. I didn't have one. You were close. Yeah, don't scare me. I was hoping the pennant was not lost in there, and then I would have really been in trouble. So how about that? Yes, uh, Amber, you're going home with the, the Italian sausage bobblehead and the mini Ryan Braun bobblehead, courtesy of our friends with Bobbles Galore, the signed photo, and the I ice let him scraper. Win, by the way. Steve, you're going home with some great prizes nonetheless. How about a round of applause I for let the him guys win. tonight? He's the guest. I let him win. What's that? I let him win. Uh -huh. the, Mark West guest. let you win. Yeah, let him win. He's the guest, you know. He's the guest. He has to win, he right? He has to win, uh, right? Because it's rigged. <laughs> Yeah, those are like right under. Yeah, it was so. rigged. It was rigged. It was already set up for him to win. Maybe we know. Uh, no, no. Listen, we have a very uh, strict accounting firm that watches this like a hawk. So. I don't think so. All right. So, Yash, we're winding down. The show's winding down. But uh, as always, uh, the folks here, the regulars, know that we always like to give our guests some prizes, some gifts. It's the holiday season. It's almost Christmas time, right? So you might be a quiet guy, but I know you love looking at yourself. I know you like to get up in the morning and just stare at yourself in the mirror. How do you know that? I just have a feeling. You might be right. I, weird. I don't, I don't know what to say anymore. No, I'm playing, weird. I'm playing. I'm being accused of stuff that is just not true. I'm playing. Weird. So, Yash, you have a shrine for yourself. No, not really. Well, you're going to start right here because we're going to give you uh, some pictures. Put it up on the screen. The first one is Yash blocking TJ Watt, right? Wisconsin's very own T.J. Watt. T.J. had no chance against Yash Nyman right here. There you go. That's for you. Thank, thank you. You're welcome. And this is another one uh, against, uh, I believe this is the Houston Texans. We get that. There it is. Look at Yash doing his thing. Making sure Aaron Rodgers stays clean. That is for you as well. Thank you. All for your man cave. And uh, I look forward to the invite to, at some point to see how the shrine's coming along. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Nobody ever, nobody ever takes me up on the offer. Marquez is telling me I'm weird. Yash is looking at me like he wants to beat me up. That's fine. It's just a normal show. So, tell you what, we're going to do another audience question, though. We got another one for Yash here, if uh, you don't mind. This is from Jim. Uh, right over here, Jim. Raise your hand. That's for Yash. Jimmy over boy. There. Jim. Uh, Yash. How you doing, Jim? He says, You're a high energy guy. How many calories do you need to keep the energy level up, right? He wants to know how much you, you chow down maybe before a game. Uh, before a game? Well, I mean, I will have salmon. Well, salmon, spinach, sweet potato, but like probably three or four of those because like, they come in portions. So I'll have a good, decent amount of those portions. Probably for our family, but just for me. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> if that answers your question. <laughs> Grizzly Dan likes that. Average size uh, family, Yash. Same yeah. plate. Yeah. A family of four and uh, one plate for Yash. They equal the same amount of food. Well, what's, uh, as we wrap up, what's Sunday going to be like? If both of you guys, you got to wait a little bit, right? That, that's, that's, a, that's a long wait. Yash, are you just going to be eating all day before you, you, you take the field <laughs> and you're making sure you're all, you're all good to go? <laughs> no, no. I won't be eating all night. Yeah, man. Night games suck. They, just, they do, don't just they? Just waiting, especially Monday night games on the road. Those are the worst. Um, but playing at home, you know, at nighttime is not that bad because you can at least be at your house and hang out there. But on the road, I mean, it's a Monday night game. And obviously we're playing on Sunday night, but Monday night games, there's no football on. You're, there's nothing on TV. You're just sitting in the hotel, staring at the ceiling, watching soap opera or whatever is on TV. <laughs> right. like, just, just, those are the worst. Yeah. Those well, are the worst. What, uh, what time do you get to the stadium on a Sunday night? Um, like usually Atlanta. two hours before, two or three hours before. So you're so. looking at about five-ish or so, mm -hmm. 4.30, 5 o'clock. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah, it is a long day to wait. Do you watch football? Do you take naps? Or what, what do you do? Just I might have something? a game on. I usually play video games, to be honest. Um, kind of just like not be locked into football because it's going to be, you know, all that for the rest of the night. So I kind of just like to play video games and keep my mind stimulated where I'm not just sitting down and not doing anything. Kind of like to... Be competitive by playing video games. So. Get Ace and take Ace and Spade out for a walk too. Nah, just open the back door, let them go run around. It's too cold outside. Let them. Uh, <laughs> they can't be like in this weather either. By the way, uh, I can't imagine they like uh, run around in the snow. But yeah, some, maybe nah. some dogs do. But uh, Yash, uh, now he won a state championship in the shot put. Do you guys uh, know that he is a state champion shot putter in high school? Marquez, of course, a state champion in the 400 relay, and his team won state. So, you guys, either of you consider doing track in college? Yeah, I did, but they wouldn't let me. You want to do both? Yeah, they, they wouldn't let me in, in college for whatever reason. At my first school, 
they just said no, just flat out no. I'm like, all right, well, that dream is shot. So back to football. And then when I got to my second school, um, he said I could, uh, but it just kind of just didn't work out. And our track team wasn't the greatest either. So, you know, I feel like it would have been kind of counterproductive. Think about track, you got to keep that training going though, don't you? It's a different movement, obviously, than football yeah. movement. So, but Yash, you ever think about uh, college college track throwing a little bit? Uh, um, not necessarily. I mean, I, I did want to do both as well, but you know, once I realized like how much like I would be doing school and football, I was like, I'm probably not gonna have enough time for this. So, plus you got classes on top yeah. of that too. But Mark was, did you know? And Yash, correct me if I'm wrong. I saw this online because you, you take that for what it's worth. But as part of the Nike Combine in high school. Yash ran a 4.88 40-yard dash. How about that? Nice. That big fella can move. Not as fast as me. But he can move. That's impressive for a Is big it okay to, like, just to lie all the time? What's that? Is it okay just to lie all the time? What, what are you talking about? I, don't I mean, I'm just asking. Like, I'm, I, don't, I don't understand what you're asking. I'm just saying that I run really fast. So, but, you, uh, so you lie about lying. Wow. What did... What did <laughs> Anybody, uh, anybody who watches Seinfeld will understand the reference. It's not a lie if you believe it. Okay, that's a Costanzaism. It's not a lie if you believe it. Sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> that's worse than the creed. Isn't that, isn't that a compulsive liar? Compulsive liar is yeah, yeah, the yeah, definition. Yeah. Categorizes there too. I'm getting attacked here. This worse. Than, so I've never been called a I sociopath. So. I, so. I don't know what I feel about that. Uh, 4.88 though, 40. That's pretty good nah, for the big running. fella, right? Huh? He was running for sure. That's running. That's yeah. fast. So, did you do anything uh, fun uh, during the bye? Did you get out of town? Actually, I, w I was in town actually. Yeah, I was in town. Get out. Uh, just trying to keep my mind that fit him. Keep my mind into <laughs> you know the season since it's so late in the season. So. Okay. I can't think Marquez just said he couldn't find a plane that you could fit yeah, in to get I, out of town. Not so. Of planes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to <laughs> chuckle there, but uh, probably uh, Jupiter or something. Yeah, uh, nah, you gotta get a, a from there. Right? You gotta get a, a, a jet, one seater, view. <laughs> one seater. <laughs> a Shaq's Buick, yeah. something. Well, that last thing, Marquez. Before we uh, remember, it's offensive line is always weird here. It's always weird, but any worries about the, the bye week? Uh, Stymieing the momentum that you guys have had over the first 12 games. Uh, nah, we played, have had questions we, about we that. played so much football, man. You know, as long as we go out there and just continue to do what we've been doing, um, I think we've played enough. And I think we got a good group of guys where, you know, no matter how much time is off, you know, we can still get back to, you know, our standard. So. All right. So looking forward to it. How about a round of applause tonight for MBS and Yash Nyman? Time to go up north, right, with USA Today Sports Plus. Uh, USA Today Sports Plus is the new sports app that puts the fans first, get the latest scores, stats, and standings, and enjoy interactive experiences with our award-winning sports writers. Download USA Today Sports Plus from the Apple or Google Play stores today. USA Today Sports Plus, fan harder. This is where we predict Packers v. Bears Sunday night at Lambeau Field. Now, Ricardo is not here. This is where we make our usual Packers bet. But he has told me from his place in Florida, that he will wear a Packers jersey if Green Bay wins. All right? If the Bears win, <laughs> if the Bears win, I have to wear a Walter Payton jersey. I'm not worried about it in the least. So Ricardo, of course, is picking the Bears, everybody. What do you think about that? There you go. Did you hear that, Ricardo? That was Tracy Santos. But I'm putting the victory visor back on the head. Right there it is. And I'm picking Packers 84, Bears 3. What do you think of that? Not even going to be a game. Packers have won five straight in the series, 22 of the last 26 meetings. Bears have dropped six of their last seven games. They're a mess. That skid started with the Packers beating Chicago in week six. Will it be Andy Dalton or Justin Fields under center? Uh, uh, Justin Field at quarterback uh, won't matter. Packers are the superior team, and uh, they're going to get uh, another W, go to 10-3, and three and keep uh, that uh, NFC top seed push going. What do you guys think, right? 84-3. to three. A few more things before we wrap it up. Uh, Packers News app, that's exclusive commentary, uh, insider analysis, and award-winning photos and videos from USA Today. Wisconsin, Network Wisconsin's uh, Packers coverage team. The Packers News app is your one-stop shop for complete coverage of the Packers. The app is available for iPhone and Android users. Also, 
Thank you to our sponsors and friends, Unison Credit Union, Bobbles Galore, Mark Olenichik Realty, Cooney's Embroidery and Sportswear, USA Today Sports Plus, Mayfield Sports Marketing, Escort Limousine Service, Mike Thiel and Eric lives here, and of course, the Paper Valley Hotel. Tonight's keyword for the signed canvas print of Alan Lazard, and we might have a signed print of you too that uh, we're cooking up. Uh, yeah. are, are you aware of that? Mm -hmm. All right, we might give away a signed print canvas of uh, MVS as well. So this is for the online folks. Uh, again, our keyword tonight, Rosie, put it up on the screen. Flash! There it is for this guy. Flash is the, the, the new keyword. Keep collecting those keywords for the online entries. And of course, the folks here can win those uh, prizes as part of, our, part of our extravaganza edition. So everything is done except for one more thing, Marquez, and it's you that has uh, the final word tonight. Well, I just want to get one more round of applause to my guest here. <laughs> Thanks for coming out. He was a, a great guest, my first guest for the show. Yes. So that's an honor. Um, and thank everybody who attended. Um, even you guys over in the back. Thank y'all too. Um, and we'll see y'all next week. Go Pack Go. There you go. Yeah, keep those claps coming for Yash, for the Flash, for Ricardo in Florida, for Jake, and the rest of the Clubhouse Live crew. I, I'm the sociopath, apparently. I'm Brett Christofferson signing off. Be back here next Monday night as we do celebrate a big Packers victory over the Chicago Bears with this guy, Green Bay Packers wide receiver number 83, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Everybody, take it away.